He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the risen Son of God. They couldn't kill Him, couldn't keep Him in a grave. On the third day, He came out triumphant over death, hell, and the grave. He's still the King of glory. All powers given unto Him in heaven and on earth, even under the earth. God's turned it all over to Jesus, and I hope you're serving Him this morning. If you're serving any other uh, dignity, any other God, any other elite, then you're serving the wrong one, Jesus Christ, the righteous King. He's the bridegroom of the bride. The church is the bride of Christ, and Jesus is the bridegroom. And He's gone away and been gone 2,000 years to prepare a place for us, and He said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I'm going to receive you under myself. When that trumpet sounds, it's going to be a sound of gathering, saints of God. Oh, and the Lord's not going to blow it in a corner covered up. That old Gabriel on the stand of the curb of the Glory Land Avenue is going to take a deep breath if he has to breathe. He's going to blow on that trumpet of gathering and the church is going to come together. The dead in Christ shall rise first. It's going to be so loud, it's going to penetrate the earth. Every ounce of concrete, every pound of steel, every drop of water, wherever a saint of God's buried, that trumpet's going to permeate everything and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, that's you and I in this Philadelphia church age, we're going to be caught up. Amen. Then the Greek word is a, 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 a hapso. The Greek word is we're going to be caught up. Amen. Raptured. We're going to be out of here. Harpazo. We're going to leave this low land of sorrow. And we're going to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. I don't care how hard it is here. I want to comfort you this morning. The Lord's going to come get you. He's going to come get you out of trouble. He's going to come get you out of dilemma. He's going to come get you out of depression. He's going to come get you out of evil. He's going to come get you this morning. He's a King of kings and the Lord of lords. Can you give Him praise in this house this morning? Glory to God. Glory to God. He's ready. Jesus is ready. I believe He's standing beside the throne of the Father. Saying, Father, it's today the day I'm coming. It's today the day you're going to let me come. My bride's almost ready. I want to go down and get them so bad. I got every piece of furniture polished in the mansions of the saints of God. I got all the flowers planted at the curb of Glory Land Avenue. Everything is intact. Everything is in place. All that I like, Father, is that my bride comes and walks alongside of me and is with me. I believe everything is set in order that the Lord could come this morning. How about you on Radio Land? Are you ready? He's coming. Ready or not, He's coming. He's coming and you may be at work. You may be at play. You may be buying groceries. You may be sitting down in a restaurant. But He's going to come get you. He's going to come get you. The devil's been fighting you all week, but the Lord's going to come get you. I'm going to tell you, you may be warring, spiritual warfare, but the Lord's going to come get you. He knows where you're at. He knows where you're at. He knows where you're at. He knows the battle. Somebody needs to stand up in this house and give God praise because He knows where you're at. He knows what you're fighting. He knows the the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The Lord knows this morning where we are at. He knows what He's going to do and is getting His bride ready. I don't know about you, but He could come right now. I don't even have to preach. He could come right now and catch us away. I'll meet you in the cloud, Brother Wade Franks. I'll meet you. Don't you get next to mine because I'm going to be shouting, amen. That's going to be a loud cloud where I'm at. I'm going to praise him. When I, I ain't even going to look back, Brother Ricky. I'm going to be gone with him. I know, Brother Park, I made it in time. When I step out on that cloud of the glory of God, amen, I know that things are going to be ready. He's coming. He's coming. The world is screaming Jesus is coming. 
At an hour that you think not, the Son of Man's coming. He's going to come as a thief in the night. Some people say He can't come today. It ain't bad enough. Don't tell me the Lord can't come. It's bad enough. It's bad enough in Israel this morning. It's bad enough in the United States of America. He's coming. He's coming after His own. The Lord's coming to catch His bride away. All He's waiting on is that one Gentile soul to get saved, the last one of the church age. And Jesus is going to come. Amen. You may be doing different things, but the Lord's coming. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise and you may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I feel the glory in the house this morning. Glory to God. Not only this morning, but I tell you, I felt the glory of God in this place for months and months. I believe God's on His way, don't you? He's trying to get His bride ready. I got a little announcement I need to make. Peter R. McCoy from Montgomery, Alabama, Auburn University, professor, AUM. He's going to be speaking at the Crenshaw, Crenshaw Historical Society at 2 p.m. in Luverne Perfect Public Library. And the title of his speech is going to be Grow Your Own America. Amen. That's sort of what I want to preach on this morning. I want to preach on a message entitled The Pied Piper. How many knows what the Pied Piper is? It's a little fairy tale, a little story, a little legend that used to go around when we was kids and we would read it about the Pied Piper. And what happened was this city had a problem with rats. I know you don't have a problem with rats or spirits or evil things or anything like that, but this city had a problem with rats. And they couldn't get rid of them rats. I mean, rat poison wouldn't do it and traps couldn't catch them, so they hired this man who had a little flute. And they hired him and they said, we want you to come. We're going to pay you a certain amount of money. And we want you to come to our city and we want you to play your flute and we want you to lead these rats out of town. So he come walking into town with that little flute. Boy, he was just giving it all he could get. This was in the 1200s. Amen. How many knows that was before my time? Say amen. I'm glad it was before my time. Amen. He was playing on that flute and them rats was coming out of everywhere. They was coming out of the cupboard, coming out from under the bed, coming out of the walls. And he'd walk by the house playing that flute and they'd just pour out of the house, out into the street. By the time he got to the end of town, he had a multitude of rats following him. And he played that tune right on down till they got to the sea. And they, all those rats just boiled out over the end of the sea. And every one of them died and perished there. He accomplished his goal. So he come back to town and he told, told the, the city council, listen, I've done the problem good. I've got rid of all your rats. I'm ready for my pay. How many knows there's always going to be a payday? Amen. And the city council said, man, we can't pay you. That's so much money. We, we ain't going to be able to get up that money. And naturally the, the flute player was mad and he was upset and he done used his talent to get rid of the problems and here the city council was, hadn't hold up their end of the deal, so here's what he did. He said, I'm going to get all your children. So he changed the tune on his flute because it's a different tune from a rat to a child. I'm going to preach to you this morning about the Pied Piper, and I'm going to the Bible to do it. He changed his tune, and he began to play that tune for children. Strange enough, children started coming out of the houses like the rats did. And they was all having a good time going down the street as he was playing, dancing, and they were shouting. They was having a good time. These kids were behind him. And they disappeared out of town, and they never saw those children again, ever. America is sacrificing our children for the evil that we are doing. Our abortion clinics to the tune of 4,000 babies a day are being aborted in the United States of America. Children are being taken out of families, Christian families, and putting in foster homes because they don't like Christians. I hope that you've heard on the news this week where They're taking the chaplains out of our army so they can't teach or preach or pray Christianity. We're going to have an army without God in it. 
We've had a school without God in it since 1962. And can I point to you this morning what's going on in our school systems in the United States of America? It's a war zone. It's a killing zone. They don't know why these people are killing their children walking into Sandy Hook Elementary School and just mowing them down. What kind of person? Well, when you take God out of it, I wonder who you got in there when you take God out. Amen. It's time to pay the Pied Piper this morning. I'm in the book of Daniel chapter 3. I'm going to read you a bedtime story, but I'm going to preach a real-time message. Daniel chapter 3, and I'm going to begin reading at verse 13. And I want you to know one thing. Music is something today. Amen. I wonder why we got all the most evil, eerie, demonic music that we've ever seen in our life going on. Well, I'll just tell you the root of it. His name is Lucifer. He was the choir leader of heaven. He had all the talent. He had all the presentation. He had all the anointing when he was in heaven. His main job was to lead praise and worship in heaven. And he was good at it. He had deceived a third part of the stars when Lucifer fell in Isaiah 14. And the reason is because he was a pied piper. And he piped his pies all through heaven and he drew a third part of heaven and he left and, and went down into the atmosphere. And the earth was without darkness and it was a void and it was formless on, on the face of the deep. And he came down with all the evils that he left heaven with. He just turned away from God at a, just a moment's notice, so to speak. And I want to tell you something. He's been at his business ever since. We've had to contend with him ever since we give our life to Jesus, Radio Lamb. You're having to contend with him this morning if you're listening to us. And I praise God that you are on Radio Land across this nation, across the world. You can uh, tap in on our uh, website via internet and you can uh, pick up this broadcast every first Sunday of the month at 11 o'clock Central Daylight Savings Time now. And you need to do so, amen, because I want to tell you the Pied Piper's about his work. And I want to uncover some of his work this morning. You're going to be able to relate to what I'm going to preach about this morning. Daniel chapter 3, verse 13. There's certain words in this portions of Scripture that is going to ring a bell with you. Things that's happened over the last few months is... uh, It's coming together, amen, and we see these things uh, gathering themselves together and they're gathering against the church. They're gathering against God. They're gathering against the Christian. They're gathering against you praying. They're gathering against you serving the Lord. They're gathering against the righteousness of God in your life. You're having to fight and deal with these things I'm going to preach to you about this morning. And I want to just encourage you before I read a scripture... You press on toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. All of you that's going to press, and it's a pressing way this morning. All of you that's going to press, God's going to grant you your petition. He's going to place favor in your life to press on. He's going to plant grant favor in your life to do the things that God wants you to do. It's time for the church to come out of the closet. Amen. We've been in the closet far too long. On the other side of the track, wouldn't let us on Main Street for a long time. But I'm telling you, this time the church comes out of the closet. And we're not going to come out empty-handed, dear heart. We're going to come out preaching the Word. We're going to come out praying. We're going to come out fasting. We're going to come out teaching. We're going to come out doing what God wants us to do. And the Lord's going to set the captives free. For He chose the foolishness of preaching to confound the wise. Can you give the Lord praise? in the house this morning. I want you to listen to some of these words and see if you can pick them out. Uh, Daniel chapter 3 verse 13. And Nebuchadnezzar, he's the king of Babylon. God put him in that position for a reason to punish Israel and Jerusalem and Judah because they backslid and got away from God. He put Nebuchadnezzar here. He was the king of the world, so to speak. And God put him in that place. And God put him there for that very particular reason. You know the story how they went into Jerusalem and Judah and they captured all the people there. And they brought out a hundred of the best young men they were available. The most schooled young men. Those that were dedicated to God. Those that knew the temple rituals. Those that were comely. Those that were smart. 
those that were orderly in their life. They chose the best ones to carry to the captivity of of, uh, Babylon. And then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring three of these boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These boys were godly boys. These boys were godly. They lived godly. They went to the temple. They worshiped God. They offered sacrifice. These were godly young men. And they were handpicked by Nebuchadnezzar and they done rose up in the ranks of Babylon. Everybody knew them by their first name. Well, here comes old Shadrach. I remember he come out of Jerusalem and Judea. I remember when he got to Babylon. I, I saw the light of God upon him, but it was a light of God in an in a evil world. How many knows we're living in an evil world this morning? You need to let your light shine. Then they brought these men before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? What's wrong with you boys? What's wrong with my gods? Everybody's got gods. There's more than one way to heaven. They'll try to tell you that. Don't get quiet on me now. Now ye be ready when at the Time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute. In other words, I'm going to turn all this music over to the Pied Piper. He's going to play something that's going to appease you. And he's going to play something that's going to minister to you. It's going to move you. It's going to touch your life. He's going to play music that you can't get away with. It's got a catchy tune. It's sort of like when you're in Walmart and they put some of that music on and they play it loud enough and when you was a sinner and I'm going to get about that too it might have been one of your favorite songs when you was a sinner how many knows they buried George Jones this week and when I was a sinner he was my favorite country music singer 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 I'll get it out just be patient with I got too much to say this morning my favorite country music singer but I didn't go to his funeral amen because I've changed. I'm in a change and I've changed. I've changed who I worship. I've changed who I follow. I've changed what I listen to. I've changed what I read. I've changed. What about you this morning? And the Pied Piper began to sound on the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music. Ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Who is that God? Who is the God that you serve? Where is he? Where is that God that you serve? Who is he that's over me? Nebuchadnezzar said in a mad rage. Who is God? I know some years back out of Atlanta, Georgia, they had a bumper sticker that said, God is dead. Boy, and the atheists and the agnostic and the unbelievers went wild over that bumper sticker. And some of the Christians in that area saw it and they said, I'm going to counteract that. And they got them a bumper sticker. How many knows we need a bumper sticker that said Jesus is alive? And that bumper sticker said, "God, your God may be dead, but my God is alive. Amen. Who is your God? He, who's going to deliver you out of my hands? And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of the hand of out of thine hand, O king. But if not, what you going to do if God don't show up? How long are you going to stand? How long are you going to pray? How long is your faith? How deep is your faith? How much is your commitment to God? How deep are you uh, 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 in, uh, satisfied on the foundation of God? Where are you standing this morning in Jesus? Does a puff of wind move you? But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the anointing that makes preaching easy. I ask you, Lord, let my mind be stayed upon the message you've laid in my heart. And 
God, let me preach the outline that you've given me today in its entirety. And I pray for the anointing on the airways. I pray, God, that they'll call somebody and say, listen, you've got to hear this message. He's preaching about a fairy tale, uh, the Pied Piper. And I pray, God, that when they listen, that you'll capture their heart. Holy Ghost, would you do the will of the Father this morning, not only in this house, but on the radio ways, in the name of Jesus. I assign you the glory and the praise and the honor for what you accomplished today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. Boy, it makes the devil mad. He'll get in a rage. He'll get in a rage when you begin to do something for God out in the public. Amen. It'll make him so mad that he'll hunt you down. And, amen. Just to persecute you. And, but you let one devil rise up and they'll glorify him or they'll glorify her. But you let somebody that's Christian step up and take a stand for God and they'll persecute them. Amen. But the Lord said that we're going to be despised and hated because of the name of Jesus Christ. It's about time that something happens to stir the church this morning. Amen. We've been sitting back lackadaisical. We've just liked sitting in the shade drinking Kool-Aid and stirring it with a spade. We like those Sunday school picnics where we eat hot dogs and drink iced tea. We don't want to be disturbed. Amen. You leave me alone. I preach to my people on Sunday morning, but you leave us alone and we're just going to do our own thing. But the Lord said, I do want you to do your own thing. He said, go out in the highways and the hedges compel them to come in it's time to beg somebody to come to the house of God it's time to tell them listen that lifestyle that you're living is demonic you need to come and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ it's time to come out of the closet I know the devil's in a rage this morning amen he's in a rage in our government he's in the rage of the departments of our government He's in a rage in the, in the city government, in the state government. He's in a rage. Amen. I don't think he's pleased when a church puts a float in the Christmas parade. I don't think he's pleased when the church steps out and helps a family that their house are burned and they can't get help from anybody else in the city or in the state or in the government. I think the devil gets in a rage when you step out of your comfort zone and you say, Lord, I'm going to do what you want me to do. I don't care if it hair lips the devil himself. I'm coming out. I'm coming out of this closet. I've been set here too long. I'm going to make an impact in Crenshaw County. I'm going to make an impact in Luverne or Brantley or Dozier, Alabama, or Troy, Alabama, I'm going to make an impact. That old Nebuchadnezzar was in a rage. And he was in a rage because nobody was worshiping him. All these that were held captive wasn't worshiping him. He had a thousand of his lords in Daniel chapter 5 that came to the party of, of his grandson or his son. But at this particular time, everybody was there to worship the devil. Everybody had fallen in line. And the reason they was falling in line is because they began to play their tune. The world's got a tune this morning. It's a sinful song. It's a sinful tune. And the whole world's following after it. The whole world's going after these sports stars. Amen. The whole world's going after these quarterbacks. The whole, I wonder, I didn't see no crowd when Tim Tebow come out of the closet. I'm going to get down here. You ain't want me to preach this, but it's going to fit just right this morning. When we expose our Christianity, Brother Nick, nobody wants to give us any, any uh, uh, amount of time on television. But you let somebody come out of the closet where they're evil and they are broadcasted CNN, MSNBC, they are broadcasted all over this nation and all over this world and they are glorified. The Bible says, Woe unto them that cause good evil and evil good. There's a judgment coming. There's a judgment coming. Amen. Now listen to this. We've got to come out of the closet, church. It's time that we come out. There's a Pied Piper out here and he's piping. But the thing about this is, it's affecting the church. We're coming out right along with them. We're following right along with, with them. Amen. The world and the society and the government is playing a tune that the church can't dance to. 
I can dance to what Brother Robbie and them praise, worship, and sing this morning. I can dance to that. I can dance to that chorus we sing a lot, freedom. Amen, I can dance to that. But I can't dance to any old hum, drum, bar stew, neon light that's playing. Amen. I can't dance to none of that stuff. But you get me in the house of God where the victory is, where salvation is, where deliverance is, where God's moving in the house, and I'll be just like David when it comes from Obadiah's house. I mean, I'll have the ark with me. I'll have the presence of God with me. I'll come into the city. I'll be a praising and worshiping God. I'll have my hands high. I'll have my God on my lip, my God on my heart, and I'll praise Him this morning. Oh, and it's not the Pied Piper either that's doing all this stuff. The world is angry. The world this morning is angry at Christians. Amen. It's angry at Christians this morning. Oh, my Lord. And the church, and it's simply because we've taken a stand for Jesus Christ. Radio Ways, you listen to me this morning. When you take a stand for Jesus Christ, amen, they put a bullseye on your back, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. It's going to come. Teenagers in the halls of your schools, they won't let God in there. Madeline Murray O'Hara single handedly took prayer out of schools. Her son become a preacher. He got saved. Amen. I thought that was a black eye in, his, in her life when her own son got saved and started preaching the gospel. And she disappeared here some years back and they, they couldn't find her. Amen. But they finally found her bones. Amen. Bleached up in the dirt. But on that judgment day when the trumpet of God sounds to come before that great and white throne judgment, she's going to rise again and when she gets before the throne unless she repented God's going to say depart from me ye that work iniquity I never knew you you followed the beat of a different drum you followed the Pied Piper to the place of destruction in your life and the church and they still have their moral values man they want us to do what the world does I'm not going to get through this I'll tell you now They want us to have the moral values and character of the world. They want us to shack up instead of getting married. I heard a a dignitary on television this week said, there's no sense in anybody getting married. In fact, they're passing a law that your daughter 11 years old can get the morning after pill without your permission. We ought to be in an uprage. We ought to be outraged. We ought to be enraged. If Nebuchadnezzar can get enraged, the church ought to rise up among the nation and tell the world, listen, this is not God. This is not godly. As for me and my house, we will serve God. Whoa. If I had an 11-year-old girl in school, I'd go to that teacher. I'd go to that principal. I'd say the first sign that I see that you're going to do something immoral with my child, I'm coming and standing on your desk. I'm going to have a pair of cowboy spurs on a pair of cowboy boots. I'm going to leave enough marks on here that every time you come to work, you're going to see these marks and you're going to say, yeah, I know what these marks represent. It represents the morality of a Christian. It represents the righteousness of a Christian. Listen to me. The world is listening to the tune of a Pied Piper. And it's, it's rampant. It's going across these nations. State after state is playing a tune that that alternate lifestyle is going to be all right. They're passing laws for them to get married. I'm going to tell you this. I've quit looking for the sign. I'm looking up because fire is going to come down from heaven. Don't give me no phone calls. I ain't going to give you my email address. But I'm going to tell you, fire's coming down from heaven. If God don't deal with it, he'll have to apologize to Solomon and Gomorrah. I don't believe God will ever have to do that. Do you? The church is triumphant this morning. The Pied Piper is playing his song. Listen, they're still honest. Man, have you ever seen so many lies in the last decade in all your life? 
everybody's lying. Well, I've had people tell me, I had somebody tell me a few weeks ago, it's, well, it's, I told her, I had to tell a little white lie. I said, there ain't no such a thing as a white lie. All of them is black. All of them is deceptive. All of them is evil. You can't tell a lie. It's the truth that sets you free. If you want to get free, you tell the truth and the truth will set you free. You don't have to cover the truth up. You don't have to do anything with the truth. You tell it and it'll do its own work. But everybody's trying to get away with a lie. Amen. Listen to this. And they're worshipers of God, Jehovah. We're not worshiping any other God. We worship the Lord God, Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh, my Lord will provide. Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Salom. We're worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. We're worshiping God. That God that made heaven and earth. Yeah, I know Darwin said we had a big bang. I sort of kind of believe that a little bit. I believe that God said it and bang, it happened just like that. I believe that when God said let there be light, boom, there was light. And that sun's been a beaming and that old atmosphere all these eon ages of time, it ain't run out of gas, it ain't run out of light, it ain't run out of fire. When God creates something, he creates something. Yes, the Pied Pipers. Man, I got a good mind to preach. (laughs) Listen to me. They still put God first. I know that you don't like us wearing them Christian t-shirts. They don't like students in school wearing them Christian t-shirts. But if it was me, I wish I was 14 years old again (laughs) and knew God like I know God today. I'd go to a Christian bookstore and I'd buy the most uh, uh, illuminating Christian t-shirt they had, I'd buy a dozen of them. And I'd wear one every day until I made the devil in a rage so bad and they come to me and said, you can't wear that shirt. I'd tell them this, you got to get the Budweiser's out of here. You got to get the slits out of here. You, you got to get all these demonic sayings out of here. You got to get all this ungodly stuff on a t-shirt out of here. Somebody needs to say amen here this morning. We've sat by too long and we've listened to the Pied Piper and most of the time our young folks, not our young folks, but young folks go to church, they wear the same old t-shirt they wear to school. Nobody says nothing about it. Nobody says you need to change shirts. Mama don't say nothing about it. You're advertising for Budweiser. You're advertising for Bud Dummer. You're advertising for ungodly stuff. And it's tearing families apart. It's separating children. And we're still advertising for the devil because we're listening to the Pied Piper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We still worship God. The devil's not trying to catch those he's already got. They're already in line. He's already played their tune. You can see them marching. Amen on St. Patrick's Day. (laughs) I'm going to get in trouble for this one. (laughs) You can't follow everybody that marches on St. Patrick's Day. You can't follow everybody that that, uh, on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. You can't follow everybody that marches. It's time that Christians have a march. Amen. December the 25th. I don't know why we have those uh, parades on the 1st of December. We need it December the 25th that morning bright and early. We need to come down through the main street. We need to have a vocal band. I'd love to have the Gaithers on a trailer. If I could get them on one, I'd love to get old Mark Lowry out there and let him start singing and pray in God, I think we need to come out of the closet. I don't think we need to support this stuff. Amen. That's a detriment to our health, detriment to our family, detriment to our nation. I think we need to come out from among the world and be a separate people, saith the Lord. Get your hands off of those things that God's not pleased with. Give Him praise in this house. <laughs> well, preacher, you're going to get in trouble. Well, that's my middle name. I stay in trouble. Amen. All that will live God in Christ Jesus is going to be in trouble. I don't care. We're going to be in trouble. But we are trying to reach those people that are in darkness. It didn't say, listen, (laughs) when you go into the gates of hell and pull them out, amen, they got smoke on them. I ain't talking about the fire furnace now. I'm talking about pulling them out of hell at the last minute. They got the smell of smoke on them. They got the signs of sin on them. We've got to pull them out. 
You've got to love that soul enough that you want to go to the depths and get them. You want to pull them out kicking and screaming. You want to get them out to a place of safe. The foundation of God standeth sure. It's not going to move. You hear me this morning? The word of God is still the best selling Bible, the best selling book in the world and nobody's going to overcome that. It's still the Bible. Yeah. Amen. I was reading a, de- a Reader's Digest in the doctor's office this past week and I thought about what I preached about. I preach about it all the time. It's not found in a Reader's Digest. It's found in the, in the Holy Word of God. It's time to get in it. It's time to find out what God said about it. Well, I, did God really bl- mean what he said? <laughs> Is God going to be that dogmatic about some of this stuff? Let me tell you this morning, God's dogmatic about everything He put in the book. He's not going to change it for me. He's not going to change it for you. It's dogmatic. God said it, and that settles it right there. Amen. He's targeting the righteous. Everything they're doing is targeting the church. Tells us in the book of Revelation that when the rapture takes place, the world's going to have a party. Amen. They're going to send gifts when those two witnesses are laying dead on the streets of Jerusalem. They're going to have a party. They're going to dance around their dead bodies for three days. Amen. Because the righteous preachers are gone. Amen. We got some coming out of seminary, a cemetery, a seminary, a cemetery, a seminary. It's a broke record. Coming out of seminary that won't preach the word. I'm going to preach love. Pastor God loves love. Yeah, but he hates sin. He judges sin. Amen. And when we come out from among that world and be separate, we can see these things. Amen. But the preachers won't preach what's the truth. I don't want to offend anybody. I don't want to offend you either, but I'm not going to let you leave here without hearing the word. Amen. You've got to hear it. That word's what sustains you. That word's what keeps you. That word's what picks you up. That's word, that word's what keeps you intact. Amen. That word's what keeps you in the boundaries of the presence of God and the righteousness of God. If you don't want to live righteous, don't get in the word. If you want to live righteous, you get in the word and you apply it to your life and you apply it to your heart and then you'll walk in the righteousness of God. Can anybody shout amen on that one? Oh, but we don't want Bible reading in our schools either. No, but you want the Koran in there. We want you to dress like those folks dress. We want you to parade around and we want you to memorize. That's going on in the schools of the United States of America today. Amen. They're causing your children to come under Islamic rule by studying the Koran and dressing like them. They're doing it in public schools in these United States of America. The Pied Piper is playing and they're listening and they're following him. It's time to come out from among the world. Stop listening to that awful mess. It's time to hear what God said and follow him. Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. And another they will not listen. Amen. He's in the music. He's in the music of the world. He's in some Christian music. Oh, preacher, wait just a minute now. Don't you mess with some of my music. Some of that stuff they call Christian music don't have enough of Jesus in it. (laughs) To get saved. Stay saved. I listen to some of it and I can't find Jesus in none of it. I can't find the blood in none of it. I can't find holiness in none of it. I can't find nothing that pertains to God in other, none of it. It sounds like a love lullaby without God being in it. Amen. Let me tell you something. That old Pied Piper will come back to town. Amen, and he'll blow that that clarinet and that trumpet and he'll make you hear that sound and I'm going to tell you, it'll appease you. He's using fashion. Now I know I, I, I really need to, to preach a clothesline message. I don't have time. I drive a school bus. I drive one every day. You ought to see what some of these kids wear. Some of these boys have got their britches way down under their... I ain't got to put that word in there. You already know it. You see them like I do. You know where that come from? 
had come from prison. In prison, if you wore your britches down and you was a boy, boy or man, you wore your britches down, that means you was available to anybody in there. And you say, preacher, that is ugly. They hear worse than that every day in the halls of schools. Amen. And the thing about it, some of them is Christian boys. Well, I, I got to rephrase that. Some of those are, are boys that go to youth meeting, church. But the pastor don't have enough intestinal fortitude to preach the word. Fashions. I'm going to follow this fad. I remember when the hula hoop was a fad. Some of you are not old enough, but some of you are. We'd go to, it was uh, V.J. Elmore's in the, on the square, and, uh, right off the square in Troy. My daddy bought me a hula hoop. Man, I thought I was a hoop. It took me, Brother Ricky, about three weeks to learn how to keep that thing above my hips. But all of the God-awful motions you had to make. If I did it now, you'd have to call 911. This old body would be in a shock. But whatever the Pied Piper's playing, we want to get in line, and the church folks are right along there with them. We don't see any harm in that. We don't see any wrong in that. Here's what the Lord said. Paul recorded it. Amen. We got to come out from among the world. If you got it, how do you think they're going to know you're a Christian? If you're doing the same thing the world's are doing, how do you know that they're going to say you're a Christian? You got to change. You got to change your music. You got to change your fashion. You got to change your morality. There's a change coming to the house of God. You may not come back again, but I'm going to get you this morning. <laughs> pleasures, lovers are pleasures more than lovers of God. I'm coming to church as long as it's convenient. I'm going to come to church if it's convenient for me. Amen. My wife and I, I wish I could tell you how many miles we put on our vehicles. We wore them out going from house to house compelling people to come to church. They'll promise you the days long. I'll be there, Pastor. I'm going to be there Sunday morning. Some of you know what I'm talking about. They do you the same way. And here comes Sunday morning. And you're standing outside looking for them to drive up and you see them drive by. <laughs> do you want me to go into great detail? Amen. They're driving by the house of God. And they go down the road and they get in a wreck. And who's the first people they called? Pastor, would you come visit us? We're in the hospital. We had a wreck. Was you on your way to church? <laughs> uh, by the way, we wasn't. We was on the way to the beach. Call the beachcomber. Let him pray for you. Playing that, that Pied Piper's playing a tune. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Paul said it in 2 Timothy 3 and 2. Verse 2, verse 5, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having the form of godliness, but denying the power of. From such turn away. Don't entertain those things. Don't follow the music to the Pied Piper. Everybody's doing it, Pastor. Why don't y'all get on board? Everybody's doing it. My wife and I went to Pitmaster's Barbecue a few weeks ago. I've been wanting to go to one for years. And I did enjoy some of that. I got in there and all this stuff was going on because they, they didn't just dictate the activities because of Christians. So we had to endure some things. They had a big old tent put up down there. You could get your meal and go in that tent, sit down to a table and eat, but you had to go by a bar where they sold beer. When we go in a restaurant, the first thing they want is, they say, do you want Charbonnet? I said, who is she? They say, you want red or white? I said, no, my wife's white. (laughs) 
Sometimes I just bold and I say, no, we don't drink alcohol. Don't bring me no Bud Dumber. Don't bring me nothing from the Rockies. I don't want no silver bullet. If I get a silver bullet, I want it in my pistol so I can take care of a vampire. Let me, while I'm here, you're praying for me, ain't you, Brother Robbie? You know how to pray for me, man. You better be crying and fasting and praying right now. There's an upheaval of evil. Evil don't ever present itself as evil to start with. It's something that looks innocent. This Harry Potter mess is not innocent. He rose up and the lady that writes Harry Potter's got a wicked mind. She can't write that stuff if she don't have a wicked mind and a wicked heart. And they put out all these movies and they put out all these books and they want you to go watch Harry Potter. Send your church group there. It's full of witchcraft and witches and seances and evil spirits. It's a wonder they don't come out of there so bound up by demonic forces and it's a wonder they don't come out of there crazy as a Betsy Bug, and some of them do, amen. They watch these old video games, and they listen to this old rock music, and then when they get old enough, they'll get them a gun out of their daddy's cabinet, and they'll go to the schools because God's not in there. There ain't no nothing for protection, and they'll start killing your children and your grandchildren, and you're still letting them be Pied Piper right onto the cesspools of life. The Pied Piper's playing the tune that's hard to resist. It appeases to your flesh. Oh, preacher, I ain't got no flesh. My flesh has died. Yeah, you need to come up front and we'll check you out. (laughs) There's still too much flesh in us. You still have a battle with that flesh. You still can't control it at times. Because that Pied Piper's playing your tune. Dong, 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 dong. He's playing your tune. You can be walking by a store and that tune's playing. You say, hmm, where'd I hear that? And you'll back up two or three stores and you'll walk in there. And that's your tune. You know, like old what's his name said, here's your sign. Here's your tune. The Pied Piper's playing it. And we're getting in line. Well, everybody says, nobody won't notice me in that line. (laughs) Nobody notices me while I'm in that line. Oh, yes, they will. They notice Peter. Aren't you one of them disciples that followed Jesus? Not me, buddy. I've heard the Pied Piper. I'm going to the fire out here in the courtier. I'm not one of them. Yeah, and then the maid come by and said, aren't you Peter? Aren't you one of his disciples? Not me, buddy. And then he cursed. And then when he did, the cock crew. The Pied Piper was playing his song. Song of rejection. Song of negligent. Song of neglect. The Pied Piper was playing it. Peter was a part of it. And the churches fell in the spell of following the Pied Piper. Simply because Nebuchadnezzar's in a rage. Because you won't worship him. You won't shack up like the rest of the world. You won't be a liar like the rest of the world. You won't go to the bar on Saturday night and in church on Sunday. You won't do none of that junk and and the devil gets in a rage when you stand up at a football game and want to pray and ask God's blessings upon the event. They don't want you to say a word and when men and boys get hurt and they get their knees blowed out or their back blows out or their concussions, then they want you to go to the hospital and spend your afternoon praying when they don't darken the doors of a church. I'll tell you how to put the devil out of business. Go to church on Sunday. That's too simple, Pastor. Go to church on Sunday. I'm fixing to have to close. I appreciate you not turning me off. WAOQ 100.3. Because there's somebody playing your tune this morning and you're falling to the Pied Piper's tune. You're getting in line with everybody else. And God
God's not pleased with it. Jesus died that you and I would not have to die a natural, I mean a spiritual death. We die in a natural death. The Pied Piper's playing a tune that is hard to resist. Listen to this, three things. And I'm going to close. He's going to appeal to your nature. We still have the nature of the flesh in us. It's still there. I want to think that I've got it under control, but sometimes that nature will rise up. You just let somebody do you wrong. And you watch that nature. It'd be like a hot air balloon. It takes hot air to get it to float. You'll get that about 3 o'clock this evening. It appeals to our appetite. Every one of us has got an appetite. Got an appetite, not necessarily for food. We've got an appetite. It's the hardest thing. When I got saved, I was used to driving down the road with my booming on, and I couldn't find anything I could listen to. It's hard to be silent in a car or a truck. I need a racket. So I had an appetite. I said, God, what am I going to do? I done destroyed all of my rock and rolls. Tapes and music, I, what am I going to do? He said, do without a while. What you going to do if you're going to do without it? You're going to spend time in prayer, in the presence of God. You're going to spend time in His Word. Amen. Because when the Lord saved you, He started pouring you out. Pouring out all that old stuff that wasn't supposed to be in there, didn't need to be in there. And when He pours all that stuff, it's going to leave a void in you. What you going to put in that void? You're going to put this in that void. I'm going to put music in there or I'm going to put reading in there or I'm going to do something. I'm going to put something in there. It's time to put God on the inside of us. If we're going to be Christians that's going to stand in the last days, we got to start putting God in the house. And we got to do it daily. Not just once in a while. We got to do it daily. He appeals to our appetite. Number three. He knows just how to play. And he knows just which tune you'll follow. Amen? He, we're not ignorant of, God, of the devil's devices. He knows just how to play that tune. He knows just the right one to play. Because if it appeal to your sinful flesh it will appeal to your saved flesh because of the nature. Now that probably didn't make any sense to you. But you remember what I preached last time we was on the radio? Eating cucumbers? God's brought you out of sin, out of Egypt. He's closed that door. You know right from wrong. But you still remember those sinful things. In Egypt, Lord, I need to go back to them cucumber patches. And God said, no, I've closed that door. You don't need to go back to that patch. But he knows just which tune to play. And you know, sometimes we hear a, a bad song played badly. It don't bother us, but you let him play it just right. And when you read in the book of Psalms, it tells you of the, the instruments that they used to play those psalms in they played those psalms in some of the best instruments the care they took to build that instrument had a certain sound to it the Pied Piper this morning's got a certain sound he's playing his flute and there are multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision following that sound come on somebody following that sound and I'm I'm sad to tell you it's the church The church is following right along in line. Nobody's telling them. You don't have to get in line. God's got something different for you. He's got a different song that you can sing. He's got a different walk that you can walk. The way of the Lord is straight. Gun barrel straight. The gate is narrow that leadeth to life everlasting. But wide is the way and winding is the way and wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. Many there be that goes in thereat. But there's few that finds the narrow way simply because they're following the Pied Piper to the wrong place. 
Now you know I'm not through. I got two more pages of notes. And I'm not going to hold you. I'm going to finish it tonight. The world's playing a tune this morning. And the church is following. It's sort of like when the Roman Catholic Church was destroyed in Russia. And old Joseph Stalin killed a million of his own people and preached and run the Christians out. And the government took over the churches. But when the government took over the churches, they couldn't mention the name of Jesus. They couldn't preach the word. The government handed them the literature that they were to preach every Sunday morning. You don't realize today just how close we are in these United States of America that our government is trying to intervene because they're playing a tune the world wants to hear. The world's not happy that you're in church this morning. Are we off the air, Roger? One minute. Radio Land, you hear this preacher this morning. The Pied Piper is playing a tune. Are you following that tune? Or are you following God? I know the multitude's going by the way of the Pied Piper. However, you need to follow Jesus Christ. Everyone in this building this morning. I, I told you uh, last Sunday or Wednesday night. Ever since the year came into being this year, January 1st, my spiritual man has been disturbed. It's been in an upheaval. I see us going in a direction that God's not pleased with. And it's up to you and I this morning to change the directions. Our church is going to come out of the closet. Amen. I'm going to give a financial statement tonight after service. You pay tithes here. You're a member here. You can pay tithes not a member here. I want you to be in this service tonight. I want you to hear what I've got to say. Our church has stepped out by faith because we're not heeding the Pied Piper's music. We're stepping out on God's will and God's purpose. I see results because we've made a stand and we've took a direction of God. And I want you to know that. I want you to know that your board and your pastor has the heartbeat of God in their hearts and we're going to be obedient. Amen? Our agenda is God's agenda. We want to do what God wants us to do. And when we do that, then God's going to bless us. He's going to pour out His Spirit upon us. We're having people join the church. Got one this morning. Sister Velma Bender is going to join. She gave me a card here a while back. She's going to join the church. And I told her, I said, Sister, you're going to work. Amen. Brother Chad and Sister Marie, they're going to work. Brother Park and Sister Michelle, they're going to work. When you become a member, it's time to go to work. So when you see these people working in the church, don't say, where'd they come from? I'm going to tell you where they come from. God sent them. Brother Jerry and Sister Nicole, God sent them. All of you that's come to this church, God sent you here for a reason. Amen. There's a mandate on us. We've got to go out in the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. We've got to go get them. Amen. And God's assembling an army. And that army is to go out in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We're going out there. Would you stand with me this morning? Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for the anointing to preach. Lord, what a powerful message this morning, the Pied Piper. I thank you for giving it to me. Lord, for allowing me to preach it. And God, for this people that heard these words this morning. Let these words be into their spirit critical words, urgent words, life-giving flow of the words that came out of this message this morning. Those that were by radio land, I pray for a special move in their lives. Let them realize that they were marching to the tune of the Pied Piper and the end of it is destruction. I pray this morning to touch every individual here under the sound of my voice. And I thank you for it. Save the lost. Heal the sick. Deliver those that are bound. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth.